I like being juice because I like Holla. I like being Jewish because I can eat apple and honey. I like being Jewish because I like Jewish festivals because I think that the synagogue is the best one, best place to, to pr pray. I think what we're doing is really exciting and really important to uh, Jewish continuity and the survival, the very survival of Jewish life in this country. We are seeking to reach out to people where they are in their lives and we want to help them uh, strengthen their Jewish identity while recognising that they're living increasingly demanding and complex lives with lots of choices about how to use their time. I've been involved for some five years as a Living Judaism field worker, although I've been a member of Sinai for nearly 30 years. We regularly have now 70, 80 people having a, a supper together after the Shabbat evening service once a month, and most gratifyingly, it crosses the age range. We've been very conscious of the people who live on the margins of a community, in this case, the Sinai community and as more people have got involved it has definitely changed the character of the community. This weekend is the first time that we've been able to take away a group of young people from the community. I think what the community has now taken on is the fact that change is dynamic. It doesn't stop. We haven't achieved an end goal. I'd love to talk about Jewish journeys just for a moment because I think in some way uh, it encapsulates really what living Judaism is about. We take a group of people, people who might have no connections beforehand, and we tell them clearly that we are going to go and explore uh, a Jewish story. But not only do we explore a Jewish story, we in fact invite them to do some self-exploration. meeting up with Rabbi Michael Farben and his wife Olga, who are doing extraordinary work. All six of the progressive rabbis in the former Soviet Union were trained at Leobek College. In the 50 years since the college has been in existence, 150 progressive rabbis have been ordained and they have been serving communities throughout the world. Therefore, it is the intellectual and spiritual powerhouse that feeds the reform movement. These people that I've grown up with uh, are now going to be spiritual leaders in the community that can be really important um, in terms of pastoral care for 18 to 35s. There are lots of people who are seem to feel peripheral to Judaism uh, and some way we have to include them. Whenever there is a fifth Friday in a month, uh, I invite all those who are unattached and in their 20s and 30s uh, to come round to dinner at my place. It's quite noticeable they're coming to my house, not the synagogue, because actually um, a meal is much more attractive than prayers. There are different ways of being Jewish, and whatever you want, you're welcome. And the community, well, the synagogue should be a community centre, not just a house of prayer. We got the 2020 vision, which of course has changed the movement, and the movement is changing all the time and it's attracting young people. I mean, that's what we need. I mean, I've been working at the Movement for Reform Judaism for the last four and a half years and I can honestly say that now is, it's the most exciting time to be working here. Recently I went to see a member who had a particular interest in a website for young people and that, that's exactly what we're, we're working on at the moment. Um, to get inspiration for the design. We're setting up a new website for young adults which will help them talk to each other and us to talk to them and start building those types of contacts so we can find out how they're getting on, what they're doing, what they're up to, what they want from us, what we can do for them, and have a real dialogue uh, between them. To be able to work with a team of people who are in that age group, figure out how do we use technology, how do we use globalization, how do we use all of the things that are second language to them, and mesh that with a tradition that's thousands of years old in order to create a Judaism that's relevant in the 21st century. They're going to be at the forefront. One of the things that I find just incredibly exciting at the moment is there's been an explosion in the web 
on the web as a whole of social networking technologies. People are connecting up around, I suppose, creating communities of interest. And that explosion of, of those kind of tools, those kind of opportunities, is something that we're very, very keen to hook into. To unearth, expose and meet real Jewish needs um, through a whole range of ways is actually what Reform Judaism is about. It's about many ways, it's about many paths, it's about many journeys um, and binding them into the journey of the, of the Jewish people. I was brought up Baptist. When Adam asked me to marry him, I decided for myself that I would convert. I am much more involved and much more devout now that Alex has gone through a conversion than I was before. I always felt out of place, I never felt like I actually belonged there. Whereas with the reform movement I feel like I've found a place that I do actually belong. To put it at its most simple and stark, the 2020 vision is a shift from institutional needs to the needs of individuals. So that by the time we reach 2020, um, the future of the Jewish people in Britain is more secure than it is today. Do da 